I've said that Bill Walsh would love to coach Trey Lance. And yeah. my, I mean, my um, evidence is that he wanted to coach Steve Young when Steve Young's stock was down. You know, he went to Tampa and looked bad. And Tampa was running him. It's, they didn't want him. They had Vinny Testaverde and thought Vinny was better. That's how that went. So Steve was like, let me get that. Let me take that for you. But Steve, I mean, excuse me, Bill, he never got hot and heavy for a quarterback and had to have him. Like, he got Joe Montana in the third. People forget that. From what I understand, he wanted Sims, Phil Sims in round one. The plan was to get Phil Sims, but he had like a mid-round pick, and the Giants got him first, and that's the way it goes. So you didn't get your quarterback, right? and he got someone else. And then 10 years later or whatever, eight years later, he wanted another quarterback. He didn't trade up to number three. He traded a second and a fourth to get someone who would have been the number one pick in the USFL draft and would have been the number one pick coming to the NFL, Steve Young. So he bought he, he got bought low in both cases. So my, it's my contention that while Bill Walsh would love Trey Lance, he probably would have got Trey Lance at 25. I'm not sure that he would have made this move up to number three to get Trey Lance at 21. What do you think? I think that that's a, a fair... A fair estimation based on the facts that we have available to us. But I think the one fact that you have to take into consideration that's much harder to take into consideration is what has occurred, what has transpired over those years. So we're talking about bringing Bill Walsh forward in time to a point where he could draft Trey Lance. In that time frame, the, the draft has changed immensely. The number of trades that are occurring, the aggressiveness that teams are expressing. And so I think that you have to credit Bill Walsh for for seeing value in a third round pick for Joe Montana, for seeing the value in uh, Steve Young and and Jimmy Ray pairing pairing that wasn't working out in Tampa Bay and being able to bring him in for for less than what he was worth. Jimmy Ray over there? Yeah, yeah. In the interview, he talked about how Jimmy Ray was the first one who told him, you've got what it takes in this league, kid. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I, always good to bring back somebody who, who was coaching 20 years earlier to be your offensive coordinator. So, yes, it, it is, to me, I think Walsh was an innovator, first and foremost. He was ahead of his time. So my prediction is you flash him forward to today's NFL. He's much more of the Sean McVay swinging for the fences type mm-hmm. than he is being conservative because I do think he he leads in innovation. So I would anticipate that with the changes that occurred to the draft, if he felt that Trey was the answer, he would do what it took to bring him into the building. Fair. I just remember that Bill was known for trading down. He was a trade down kind of guy. And we have no idea what Bill would do. But the next great coach, Bill Belichick, the next great Bill, did not trade up this year. I keep coming back to the Niners and Patriots having the same, being in the same spot this offseason, having yeah. the same mission statement, get a new quarterback, and basically doing the exact opposite plan. The Niners were like, you got to be aggressive here. The Patriots were like, we got to not be aggressive. We have to stand pat. And, you know, what if Mac Jones – had gotten picked one spot ahead of them, what would they have done? They would have been like, darn, well, I guess we'll just sign Cam and draft a quarterback in the second round and draft a quarterback next year. I mean, they would have just taken it in stride. Yeah. And maybe they're wrong, but it worked out for them. Or So far, it's working out at this point. I think that's the luxury of being a winning organization. That's the yeah. luxury of having the faith of your fan base. That's yeah. the luxury that's of, of being respected as the greatest coaching mind in the NFL is that – you can allow the draft to come to you. You can allow the year to come to you and and play knowing that you can win so many different ways, knowing that Bill Belichick is confident in his ability to win with defense, to win with complete three phases of the game, to, to find a young quarterback and maximize his skill set going into the season. I think that that he just has that ability to sit back and allow everyone else to panic and then come in and, and reap the spoils of that. The 49ers don't have that luxury. They didn't have this that luxury coming in. There was a lot of heat on that front office, and they needed to both be successful this year and show promise for the future. They were almost forced into the bad decision they made to try and win this year and develop for the future because of the fact that they can't win consistently underneath John and Kyle as of yet. Well, here's the irony. To me, I think the Niners would be in a better spot. They have a better record right now if they did what the Patriots did. I would think so. The Patriots are 9-4 and right now with their rookie quarterback. So what the Niners could have done is just hang out at 12, not move up, take Mac Jones. 
start them right away. Get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. Use that and put that money into the roster. Have more depth in the back, in, in secondary, in the offensive line and stuff like that. Then you have Mac Jones for a few years. I think that's what Bill Walsh would have done. Hung out at 12. Take the best quarterback available. And then in three years, then you can get Trey Lance. He's probably going to go to some team that doesn't know how to develop him. It's going to mess him up. Some team like, you know, the equivalent of the late, you know, early mid eighties bucks. Yeah. And then if you want to get him at that point and, and flip Mac Jones, you can do that. I just feel like what the Niners did puts a lot of pressure on them. It puts a lot of pressure on Lance. And when you just like, when you trade a second and a fourth for Steve Young, it doesn't have to work out. And now, I mean, there's some pressure, but it really, it, it didn't have to work out with Joe. It didn't have to work out with Steve. It has to work out with Trey. Has to. Yeah. It has to. It, it has to. And there are different scenarios, right? Steve was yeah. protected by the idea that he was behind a future Hall of Fame quarterback, that everyone knew it was Joe's show until it wasn't. And that that provided a bit of, of shielding for Steve Young to be able to come in and, and progress at his own pace. That is just not true for Trey Lance coming in. He is the savior of the future. He is the, what people view as the future Joe Montana, right or wrong. Like they're looking to him to be the answer. Yeah. And that sets up with a lot of pressure. I, I just don't think that the 49ers front office had the luxury of, of sitting back and allowing those things to play out. They need to be good right now. And so they took the, the biggest swing that they could. And, and I respect taking the swing because very quickly we'll be able to say, Grant, either they were right or they were wrong. Unless they keep him on the bench for three years. It's not his time. It's not his time yet. Sean says Jimmy Garoppolo hate stems from Jimmy Garoppolo played lights out for five games and then got 137 million. That's the first part. It's true. It's like, yeah, that's second. a lot of money. You can get that for five, for a good month. Damn. I had a good month one time. So that's part of it. Miss a lot of games. That's true. Super Bowl miss Sanders. Then Brady was turned down for him. That is true. Then we drafted Lance. So mistakes magnified. Yeah, that's true. It's really, it's really not his fault. Other than the Sanders thing. Right. And, and that's the, only a fraction of it. Yeah, the inconsistent play is definitely on him, but a lot of factors are out of, his, out of his control. Great quarterbacks tell the coach, let's go for it on fourth. Great coaches ask quarterbacks right. if they want to go for it on fourth. John Harbaugh does it with, jeez, uh, uh, why Walsh. am I blanking on his name? Walsh also drafted the great Giovanni Carmazzi. Yeah, it's a really an, an, an exact science, which yeah. is why, to me, it's all the more reason not to trade up. Like, you don't know. The Niners just realize, like, hey, he's not ready. Oh, well, then, oh, or, or would you have done this had you known that? I mean, it's a really hard position to scout, and you get it wrong a lot. So yeah. all the more reason not to trade up, man. That's, That's a obvious. fair strategy yeah. point to, to take fewer big cuts and just take more swings. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, Walsh, greatest of all time, never spent a first-round pick on a quarterback. Did he? I mean, I don't think he did. I don't think he, I'm saying, and I'm not saying, I mean, Bill Belichick did this year, but not a high one. 15. Pretty brilliant. Sat and let it come to him. But yes, in the comments, they are correct. Lamar Jackson is the name that was escaping me with reference to John Harbaugh. Oh yeah, I remember Lamar. He's, he's, a, good, he's a good player. He's pretty Josh, good. He's pretty good. Joshua says, I don't understand Niner fans. The only way Niner fans make a run is if Jimmy gets hot. Everyone should be in his corner this year, especially Kyle. Okay. That's a fair point that I I do, regardless of who's starting, I find myself on the side of believing that 49er faithful, 49ers fans should be supporting that individual because you're rooting for the team's success, right? I mean, you want them to win, and that's relying on Jimmy. So, yeah, I stand with that, that, that whoever's playing quarterback, I'm all in. This team is a joke and should be disbanded after trading up. The league should kick him out of the league. The league should kick him out of the league and let Grant build a new franchise from the ground up, Grant or nothing. I'm flattered, man. Thank you. I humbly accept. Sure. If you say so. Let's, let's let's do it. It strikes me as a reasonable strategy. I think so. I think it works. I mean, when have I ever been wrong? I said that. I'm mostly right. So I think that one, yeah. Yeah. So. Even when you're wrong, you typically have another take that is right about it. <laughs> that's the key. Is even when you're wrong, find a way to be somewhat right. That's yeah. That's right. That's what you call 40 chess. Well, that's the show. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Thank you very much, Rob, for participating in the Sioux Show, which is your show. Absolutely. Participate. Pleasure to be here. The show will continue on my channel. 
That's right. If you were watching and you want to keep watching, you can continue to watch on Rob's channel. I encourage you to do so because stop acting like you're doing anything at your at your place of work because I know you're not. It's I Friday. Asked. Yeah. He says he was joking. No, no, no. It was just, it was serious. I'm I want it. I want the team. Let's make it happen. Thank you yeah. for your you, wonderful You're representing Grant as his time. agent now. You're contractually obligated after that statement. I've never seen someone be so into me. I mean, that must be my biggest fan right there. Like I'm flattered. Thank you. All right, everyone. I'll see you around. Talk to game. Oh, wait, hold Ooh. on. Wait a second. Jamaican boy. My Jamaican point, boy at the buzzer. Is, is Jimmy Play scared? It is not a guy. He's like, he's not like Brady, Mahomes, Russ, Allen, Burrow, Lamar to an extent. Those guys go after it. Oh. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, to me, what defines him is he uh is a sir yes sir kind of quarterback yep which is rare like usually when you give a guy 27 million he's like all right well it's my franchise now and jimmy's like i run this show no it's cool like we'll hand off 50 times that's fine i have no ego that's kind of what's endearing about him right he's not a diva he's the anti-diva he he is the anti-diva in that respect And, and i do respect the fact that he he does have the memory of a goldfish jack hammer wrote a great article on it recently in reference to the ted lasso comment his ability to respond after he makes those boneheaded plays is pretty remarkable he'll throw that pick and then come back and and lead the charge on a key drive yeah you're right you're right you're right jimmy oh i gotta stop being snarky with jimmy i'm gonna have a new year's resolution be less snarky about jimmy garoppolo because it's like it's just i can't stop something you ever see that sarcastic ball episode so i'm just like i just can't stop i'm not even trying i'm sorry help me sharon he he seems to take it pretty well he seems to have a pretty jovial attitude when he speaks with you yeah dude he's a really good guy and honestly it's all beneath him like who cares what i what i say about him i mean he's got it made yeah uh i'm trying to get it made at his expense and he probably thinks it's quite amusing it is i mean i think it is i think it is honestly sure he I, thinks I've, that I've, I've talked a lot of crap and it hasn't done anything to move him out the, i mean they traded for trey lance and he's like no nah, it's my team baby oh kyle still what here it's my team baby i don't know what still you're here. going on they know your record without me don't act like jaquaski tart and jimmy ward don't know your record without me baby no it ain't gonna be that easy comes out dressed like freaking he looks so good after games. He, uh, his style is is first of all no tie, no undershirt, just like right. It's like man, I'm gonna do that too. It's a very confident look. Oh, very it, Italian. It's I'm a quarter phenomenal. Italian. I can do it. I'm a quarter Italian. That look, that is a classic look. Looks good on any gentleman. Pinstripes. He's a pinstripe kind of guy too. You know what I'm saying? Classy. He's classy. He is. I I feel like me and Jimmy Garoppolo could have a good. We, a good little, you know, radio show. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you know, I talked yeah. crap about you for 15 years, but what about now? Like, let's talk. Jimmy be fun. He'd be fun. He'd yeah. have to start saying stuff, though. But this year, I think he knows that they're like, I don't think he cares anymore. Like, he curses a lot at his press conference. Before, he used to be the guy who was like, let me say the right thing. Now he's like, he literally doesn't give a shit. He doesn't have to be the face of the franchise anymore because no. he's not. Yeah. I like, so all of a sudden, I like, I, I I guess I felt he was extremely unrelatable when he was in his mid twenties, and now that he's at thirty and he's not the face of the franchise anymore, uh, and he lets his hair down a little bit, he's like, okay, all right, Jimmy, I I like you, I like this version, not as a quarterback, but as a person, no, I like him. I actually I put up a, a poll the other day. What's what's limits the Niners more that his skill set or his contract? I think it's his contract. I think you, his skill set is good enough. I agree. Yeah, I think it's his contract. And it's the 49ers' fault for not renegotiating that contract. That doesn't fall on They could have done that. Yep. They could have said, if they, like, they've had this, you know what? Jimmy's pretty good. Why? Yeah, okay. Well, if you felt that way, renegotiate, extend him, and then draft the quarterback in round three. Like, yeah, and help him. Help him. You could have been nine and four. Yeah, anyway, this has been a great show. I like to go off on a rant at the end. That was fun. Um, Anyway, everyone go subscribe to Rob, watch Rob. Enjoy Rob.